Hey folks, welcome back to the Portable Gamer. Welcome back to Farming Simulator 17 and welcome back to Coldborough Park Farm. It's gonna be a busy day, I think, maybe. I got some plans, we'll see how it all goes. So we are back at the dairy farm and you know that this red 1455 was up at the main farm up on the hill hooked to our water bowser and we were gonna bring it down here and water our sheep. But there's been a change of plans. There always is. On the farm, you know how I do it. Got some straw bales here. And back here, I have some pre-mixed cow food. Let's get the dairy going today, too. Let's do it, right? Why not? So I brought all this up here, and uh, I have to say, this, this trailer, I mean, I think I've got a ton of weight ahead of the axles. These bales are 6,000 liters apiece. Yeah, half a ton. These are 2,000 liters, and I think they're significantly more than half a ton. So even though we have all this weight in front of the axle up toward the ton, when I was putting these on here, we were getting really, really light up front. So I drove our JCB telehandler down to the store, and I picked up some pallet forks. And I thought, let's, we'll use them. We'll need them here on the farm. So let's do it. Let's... Uh, Let's get the back of that trailer unloaded so it doesn't tip over or tip back, right? Let's get the back of that unloaded. And I did go with pre-made cow food for the moment, although we have everything we need to make cow food, which is basically straw, right? And silage, which we can make, and hay, which we can make, and then they need grass, and we can make that as well just by mowing grass and dropping it directly in there. Now, something that I noticed about FS19, and I could be crazy. The jury's still out on that one. I could be crazy, but I was wondering about this. I was under the impression that when it came to what we feed our cows, in fact, what we feed all of our animals, I was under the impression that all of these things, so the grass, the hay or silage, or hay pellets in this case, because we have the straw harvest add-on and power food, I was under the impression that all of these needed to be topped off. But what I saw in FS19 was it appeared that if you were feeding your cows power food, that was all they needed, right? And that you could feed them just hay and that would keep them alive, but they wouldn't be super productive. Or you could feed them just silage and that would keep them alive but they wouldn't be super productive so I don't know I don't know I don't I don't want to get like all bent out of shape trying to keep you can see all kinds of movement here on our trailer our, hmm. yeah those blades are fixed you see what I'm getting at here I think oh it's gonna be close it's gonna be close but we can just, just, ah, just get it in there. So I guess what I'm saying is I don't want to be mowing grass and trying to keep the grass topped off on our, uh, oh, yeah. I don't get really upset about the, uh, about the pallet handling on this game because it just is what it is. Right. So, uh, I'm trying to think where this goes. I've spent enough time on this map, I ought to know. I want to say... Moment. I want to say... This side. Yeah, let's give it a try. So, um, so yeah, you see what I'm getting at. I don't, I don't want to put a lot of time and effort into keeping grass topped off if all they need is power food. And then the opposite side of that is, I don't want to skip grass, right, or hay, if they need that to be productive. Oh yeah, that's an easy trigger. As soon as we got close, it, it saw it. Okay, cool. Now, my OCD says, must deal with that other pallet that we knocked over. And this could turn into a comedy of errors. But you know what? I ain't as scared. I ain't as scared. What's the easiest way to do this? Probably just pull the... Pull the trailer forward. Yeah, that's kind of half-assed, but whatever. It's a video game. Who cares? Let's 
get this out of the way. Are those wheels floating? They certainly look like it. Right, so we will get uh, get things sort of prepped and primed for the dairy. And then we're going to go down and pick up... Uh, hmm, how should we do this? Let's go up to the... Uh, oh, you're kidding. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Oh, game. Oh, game. Right. So unhook this one. Is that the culprit? Uh, I was thinking we could go down. I already got an animal trailer, and it is down at the store. Break this off. There we go. Oh, God. Uh, right. Madness, I tell you. Keep that right there for a second. So rather than go down to the store and get our animal trailer and start getting animals now, let's go get our Bowser and bring it down and top off the water troughs before we get the animals. I'm kind of weird about that. I don't like to, uh, I don't like to bring the animals to the farm before they have all the consumables that they need. Even though I know we have a little bit of time to do it, you know, that, that just, uh, it's one of those things, you know, like, I wouldn't do that in real life, you know, I wouldn't. We get under there. Oh, no. <laughs> ah. Oh, here we go. Ooh, I wouldn't do that in real life. And so I feel kind of weird doing it in a video game. You know, you would want, you would think, you would want all your, uh, all your consumables in place before you brought animals to the farm. Reason being, what if something, uh, what if something went wrong? You know, what if, what if you had an agreement with somebody to deliver water in the afternoon Right? You went and picked up your cows in the morning, and then they called and said, uh, there's been a, uh, oh, game. Oh, oh, oh. Right. Here we go. I'm just going to shove it in there. You've done this. I know you have. If you've played this game, I know you've done this. You've probably done worse. I know you. Right. So, you see what I'm getting at. It just, even though it's not real, it just seems uh, kind of reckless, you know, that you would have animals, which are, they're not just an investment. There you go. It took the rest of the volume. They're not just an investment, but they're, uh, they're living creatures, you know? You don't want them to suffer or be uh, uncomfortable or, you know what I mean? So I do feel better when I have all my consumables topped off before the animals get to the farm. It's just funny like that. We've also got our Ford T-Dub continuing to work, and depending on what kind of time we have, we may uh, make one more run down to the digestate tank. Okay, get that just so. We may make one more run down to the digestate tank down at the BGA and spread another section of field nine. Maybe, maybe. Haven't decided yet. We'll see how we're doing on time. So right, it is Thursday for you. It is Wednesday for me fantastic day it's uh, pouring rain hey something I wanted to tell you a couple videos ago you may have heard like a popping and tapping sound kind of in the in the background and that was the rain hitting the window I don't know if I mentioned that in the video I don't think I did for some reason but you may hear that again today because it was nice for a couple days and it is now pouring rain again it is like biblical outside and I'm up on the top floor of this uh, sort of semi-high-rise condo complex looking out at the uh, whatever you want to call it there, the courtyard. And it's the place has these massive like floor-to-ceiling windows. And that's a lot of glass, man. And when the, when the rain hits it, it just resonates and makes this sort of loud tapping or popping sound. So if you hear that again, that's what that is. That's a little bit of rain. So uh, that was on my list. What else is on my list? Um, oh, this is funny. I don't know how you are with gaming. I don't know if you have like, in your head, you have this perfect idea of what you want a certain video game to be, right? And I don't wanna say that the games that you have access to aren't that game, but 
you know what I'm talking about. You're playing a game and you think, man, this would this is awesome. This would be great if this whatever, and you and you just add one more thing. You know, uh, I racing. That's a fantastic sim. I would love to see better pit stop animations. They're getting there. They're getting there. They are. Is it this one? Yeah. Get that closed. They're getting there, but for the moment, they don't have like uh, Project Cars two level of of animations when you do your pit stops, and they certainly don't have them when you're when you're watching. Because I watch a lot of iRacing racing races on YouTube, and when you're watching other people race, they don't have any pit stop animations at all. So if you're watching a race on YouTube from like permanent third person, I guess you know broadcast type coverage. When cars come into pit, they just stop and float up in the air for a second, and then uh, and then they pull out again. There's no there are no people at all. There's no animation at all to represent a pit stop. So using that as an example, you say, "Man, iRacing racing is great. I just wish they had better pit stop animation, right?" And it seems like for every game that we have, we we can do that. We can say, oh, you know, this is awesome, but... Or we can say, this is not awesome at all. I wish they would have, you know, deedly deep, fill in the blank. So, you know, starting around January 1st, I went on kind of a binge with shooting games. that weren't They weren't really shooting games. They were more RPG games. Although, Ghost Recon Wildlands is sort of in a gray area, because it's pretty tactical. But, they're all sort of cartoony. You know, and there's a trigger for this. I want to say right about somewhere. Maybe is it the trough? Sure is. Okay, done and done. So they're not super tactical, and I know how I used to play uh, Ghost Recon years and years ago when I lived in Colorado. We played extremely tactical. Right? Multiplayer LAN. Hop out, I said. There you go. We played super slow and super methodical and super tactical and, and right? So I'm looking, and the rumor is that there's no real tactical game. That they're all sort of stylized and maybe not cartoony, but you know, that's impossible. You're not gonna have a real tactical game like that. Alright. So so I keep looking, and I finally come across Arma. Arma 3 at this point. And I don't know if you're familiar with, with this game. But, wow. Uh, just absolutely wow. It's a, uh, it's a tactical game, and it is a tactical game. Now, it's, the graphics are not that great. See, there you go. That's what I'm talking about. First thing, it's fantastic. Although, although, that's, that's just what we do. We're gamers. So the graphics are not super good, and the voice acting is pretty is pretty terrible. I don't know why so many military games and shooter games feel a need to have uh, the drill instructor from Full Metal Jacket. They there just seems to be a fascination with game developers that they they think you want to be yelled at. I don't know. In some of the training sessions. You know, you're just trying to learn the game. You're trying to learn, like, what the controls do. And you're told to, like, go to a certain location. And I'm trying to figure out how to operate the controls. It's not really made for, uh, for a controller. It's a mouse and keyboard game. But I'm trying to figure this stuff out. And the same sound loop just keeps playing over and over. Uh, of this guy yelling at you. Very sarcastically telling you where to go. And it just keeps playing. For like five minutes it played as I was trying to sort out the controls. And you can't really turn it off because it's critical dialogue in a tutorial. So, yeah, that's not too cool. Graphics, like I said, not too cool. But here's what is cool. You can mod the game. So people have made, of course, tons of mod guns. But then they've made mod maps. A moment, please. I need to go here and turn the traffic back on. And I will tell you why. After I get done telling you the story that I'm telling you, I'll tell you another story about traffic. So, you can mod the game. People have made maps, they've made missions, they've made scenarios, they've made all kinds of stuff. And I think, oh yeah, this is, uh, this is, this is 
going in the direction that I like. This is the kind of serious tactical gameplay that I've been craving, I think. And, and here's what happens. Two things happen. Very careful with the traffic. I don't trust it. So two things happen. One thing is, I graduate from the tutorials, from the training, and I start my first mission. Now, you know in The Division, that is like Bullet Sponge Central, and I bitch about that all the time. Where you're seriously like shooting just magazine after magazine of light machine gun fire into a boss monster's face, and they're just taking it. Yeah, kind of, kind of video gaming. Now, Ghost Recon is better. You can one shot, but it's a little bit silly. They have like this level where you fight the Predator, and and some of the bad guys have the Predator suits, the you know active camo where they like go all shimmery and disappear. It's just it's just silly stuff. It's cartoon stuff. Also, don't get Narco Road. Oh. <laughs> It's just a, it's like monster truck smash up. I have no idea who greenlighted that, but yeah. anyway, uh, Ghost Recon is better than the Division when it comes to realism. But there's still, you know, and now file this under the category of be careful what you wish for. You can definitely one shot people in Arma Three. But they can one-shot you, and there's no real warning system. Like, sometimes the people around you will call out when you're close to enemies. But sometimes the warning that you have that you're close to an enemy is you just die. Right? Like, you hear a shot, and then you're dead. You got one-shotted. So it's, it is realistic, and there's, there are difficulty settings. But it's a... Uh, it's a pretty serious game. So that's one thing. You know, be careful what you wish for. I'm going to get a little bit more water too because we're going to we're going to get two animal operations started. I think we're going to need a little bit more water. And if we have extra, it'll just stay in the Bowser and then we'll we'll load it up at another time. Right. So that's one thing. The other thing is I found a video online of a group of people playing co-op and I would estimate that there were probably 60 people. And it starts with an air mobile operation. It starts with an airdrop, right? They parachute in and you've got, and this is all modded in, but you've got multiple radio channels uh, and, and tactical communications, which is realistic. And the thing about that kind of radio chatter is, you know, you have one typically like a colonel or something for an operation that size. You have a colonel in a helicopter running the whole thing, or a colonel back at operations running the whole thing. And they can't listen to every channel simultaneously, so there's like a hierarchy of, of comms. Because different people need to hear and know different things, different people need to talk to different people, but nobody needs to talk to every single person, right? A colonel does not need to talk to people down to like the grunt level. And, and vice versa, and it's, it's, but there's just unbelievable chatter and communication coming over the radio. And then on top of that, during this air mobile drop, somebody breaks their leg before they get to combat. Like, during the parachute drop, somebody breaks their leg, and everybody needs to adjust for that, because somebody who was supposed to be doing something isn't. And as I'm listening to this communication, I realize that most of these people, if not all of them, clearly were in the military. They were clearly infantry. Not just because of what they're saying, but because of how they're saying it. And if you've ever seen a documentary uh, about Iraq or Afghanistan, it's crazy to hear how sort of casual and not panicked these folks are on the radio while they're in a combat zone, getting ready to go into combat. So, they get the, the injured people sorted out, they've got medevac coming in for them, and you know, they get this person sorted out, and this is gonna happen here, and they're gonna do this, and now they need to go get their equipment, which is being dropped for them. Not all right. So, 
they go get that and and then they start this patrol and it was awesome it was intimidating and i also realized that it would take me a ton of training and i'm not talking about playing the game like i got good at farm sim just by playing the game but that's not training that's just playing the game i feel like getting good at arma 3 would require actual like training like i would have to find somebody on reddit or on the arma forum and set up a time for them to train me to play this game like that's how complicated it is and a i don't know if i could find anybody willing to do that and b even if i could i don't know that i'm trying to do this right because this bowser does the water does come out on a specific side there we go yep got the right side so i don't know if i could ever really be that good to play that way because i wasn't in the military so it's it the whole thing is kind of curious for me like how that would all work and I have to say that multiplayer looks like that's where it's at. I mean, the, the single player, it doesn't look very good. And I think compared to that multiplayer, it just, it would fall flat for me. It just wouldn't do it because that multiplayer is, it's unbelievable. Even with the, the graphics that are kind of not good and, and even with some other flaws, like, that's what I would want to do, but I can't. So all of that, that whole like long thing that I just told you, I guess that's my way of saying that, you know, I look at a game and I think, oh, this would be great if, oh, this would be great if, and, and I assume that I know better than the developers. You know, that, that would have been great if they did this, but they don't know what they're doing and only I do. You get where I'm coming from. And then I, I, I think from another angle you can look at a game and think no the developers knew what they were doing because that wouldn't work and here's why and so I look at Arma 3 which is really I mean it is a popular game and it does have a big community I don't know how it compares to something like Farm Sim I mean you can look at Farm Sim wait a minute oh right this is uh, this is V2 in the in the other one like the first version of this map the the troughs were out in the sheep pasture and here they're both in the barn so let me get this thing flipped around and we'll get it backed up to that water trough let me get me flipped around there we go so so i i guess what i'm saying is arma could be more popular than farm sim and here's me saying oh you know it's not a very popular game doesn't uh, you know a lot of people aren't really into it didn't do very well and it's actually more popular than than farm sim right you see where i'm headed with that i don't know but i know it's not as popular as something like you know battlefield or call of duty or what have you and i think that's why it's just too hard it's too committing you know and something like battlefield may be cartoony in comparison something like call of duty may be cartoony in comparison but it's accessible and not everybody has that kind of time and not every developer wants to sell you one game every five years you know what i mean like some developers want to sell you a game every five weeks and they want you to play their game for 30 or 40 hours finish it and then move on to the next one they don't want you to to sort of lock in on that game and just play it exclusively for the rest of your life and when I think about something like Arma 3, I think you almost have to. You know, it's it requires that kind of a commitment in the same way that something like iRacing does. I mean, if you want to compete at the highest levels of iRacing, that's sort of the only game that you play because you're, you're going to play it every spare minute that you have because that's how much you have to practice to be competitive. You know, when you hear people talking about hundreds, or thousands of practice laps to get ready for a race you know that's that's the kind of commitment that it takes you can't you can't dabble in iRacing if you want to have a pro license 
Right. Uh, gates are all closed. I'm trying to think what we need to do here. Water, food, straw, hay. Okay, cool. Let's go get our animals. So you see what I'm saying. Uh, uh, farm sim. You can, you can play farm sim a little bit now. You can put it down. You can come back to it. You can mess with some mods. I mean, the core functions of, of farm sim are not... They're not super difficult. It's an easy game to play. And that's really the end of it. You know, I dropped a pallet earlier and I just kind of shoved it into the into the barn until it used up the uh, the consumable content that was in it, the consumable fill type. And then uh, and then it disappeared. You couldn't do that in iRacing. racing. You couldn't fudge like that. You know, it, it's it just wouldn't happen. You get banned from the service. And I suspect the same thing would happen in a game like Arma, you know, if you did some stupid shit when you were in a, a big co-op mission like that. I don't know that you'd necessarily be team killed because they seem, everybody that, that I could hear on this radio network seemed pretty professional. I don't think you'd be team killed. I think you would be probably uh, excluded from the next mission. So. So I guess what I'm, what I'm getting, yeah, I mean, the, the, I don't know that there's a clear way to say it. I feel like games like that have to sort of become the only game you play. So going back to, to my original statement, you know, be careful what you wish for. I just wanted a more tactical experience, and I found it. But it's crazy because it's like there's no, uh, there's no gray area. We go right from something like Call of Duty or Medal of Honor or Ghost Recon, we go from there straight to Arma. And the way that I found it was on a thread, I did a search for, are there any real tactical shooters? And the, the answer that I saw over and over was, yeah, there's Arma, but you don't want that. <laughs> you think it'll be fun, but you don't want that. And uh, turns out they're right. I have to say, they are, they are right. I'll give it a try. I got the Apex Edition with all the DLC, and I'll give it a try. The learning curve is steep, but you know what? The learning curve, save game. The learning curve for some games is is definitely steeper than others, and that's not necessarily a bad thing, and it's not necessarily the end of the world. You know, we can sort of push through that sometimes, and and be satisfied. Now, I said earlier that farm sim is not hard. It's not hard, but it is in its own way really complicated. There's a lot to learn. It's not the things that we do in this game aren't hard to do, but there is a lot to learn. Right, this is a Farmer Andy mod trailer. It's 10,000 euro more than the regular trailer, the regular Flegel animal transport that comes with the game. Slightly different, I believe it's taller, but I went with it. Whatever. I like mods. Sheep or cows first, and I have the triggers turned off, or the uh, you know the boxes, the bounty boxes turned off. Um, now I don't remember on this map. Do we have to go to separate places to buy separate animals, or when we click this, are we going to get one trigger for everything? One trigger for everything. Right. Let's do cows first. So we get six cows. Thirty-three again. I did max out my loan. I bought, a, uh, I borrowed a bunch of money. We're at about 250 right now, I want to say. Which is not, it's not terrible. We have 100,000 liters of canola, which I believe we'll be able to sell when the price goes up for about 80,000 euro. And we also have the ability to make silage, which we can sell for about 100,000 per cut. Right, I'm going to be very careful pulling out here because I do have live animals on board. Going for it. So, the traffic. Why was it turned off? Well, I'll tell you. So we are running more realistic. I believe this is a more realistic tractor, although it may not be because it doesn't have the second panel down in the lower left. But it might be. It might be. The Flegel DPW trailer set is definitely more realistic. Those bales are 6,000 liter bales, the ones that we bought, and then those uh, cow food TMR pallets are 
2,000 liters a piece. There's a lot of weight on a more realistic trailer. I was being very careful because it does get really tippy. And I was being very careful and making this left turn up ahead. Making this left turn, I slowed down. I'll recreate it for you. I slowed down just like this. And just about right here, I got rammed from behind and it flipped me upside down. And for the life of me, I could not get flipped back right. And then cars came like smashing in on me from all sides as though they hated me. So what I did was uh, turned the traffic off and I went and got the little JCB and brought it over and flipped everything upright. And, uh, and there we went. I did not want to reset anything, first off, because I hate resetting things in general. Also, this, this map resets you in the middle of a grass field, which is in third growth stage. And if we got reset there and had to pull out, we would crush a little grass, which I also don't like. And because our trailer was loaded, I believe if we reset, we would have lost everything that was on it. So, I didn't want to do any of those things. That's what I'm talking about. Sweet monkey. Oh. I will say this about the traffic on this map. For such an extraordinarily immersive map, the traffic is so cartoonish that it really does pull me out of the immersion. It really does. It is... Uh, it's not frustrating. It's almost laughable what the traffic does uh, and I've speculated before that it's got to be some kind of an inside joke because it's it's just absolutely atrocious and uh, and I, I'm not sure why I don't know where the map maker was going with that but so it goes right uh, what are we doing on time we're at 32 minutes what do you want to do you want to go and get more animals? Yeah, let's go and get more animals. I was thinking we could go up and uh, and spray another load of slurry. But let's not do that. Let's uh, let's just get our, our animal ops going today. Now, a real question for real farmers. Would you have sheep and cows this close to each other? I don't think you would. They've both got some uh, little microbes and critters and bacteria and viruses and so forth that you really don't want interacting with each other. Because they will, uh, they'll make each other sick. That was in the early 1900s, late 1800s, early 1900s, in the American West, there was an extraordinary amount of tension between sheep farmers and cattle farmers for exactly that reason. I believe, like, anthrax and some other things. But yeah, I, I, I know there were, uh, you know, farms were burned and people were killed and, and the, the cattle ranchers really did not want the sheep farmers coming around. Right. Confirm. Unload. Yes. Do I really want to? Un yes, I do. All right. There we go. Six cows. This is how it starts. So we're going to carefully drive back down and get... a believe we'll be able to get nine sheep and we own this trailer the reason I bought it rather than renting it is I want to uh, I want to continue to buy animals as we have money and because our loan is it's big but it's not that big uh, field 11 I want to say is like uh, 150,000 euro I'm thinking of buying field 11 although I mean the appeal of Field 11 is that we would own kind of a big wedge of property starting from down near the, the crossroads and going all the way up to the top of the hill. However, there are fields up on top of the hill, Field 3, I want to say, that essentially we could buy fields that were all very, very close to one another. And the advantage of that, obviously, is you can do a lot of, a lot of evolutions on, on various fields. Get up there. There you go. Get up there. Get up there. You can do it. Come on. This is going to be tricky. Come on. What do we need to do here to make this happen? There you go. 
We got a break in traffic too. Do we? Do we? Come on. Timing. Timing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not I'm not sure what the what the goal was there. Right, let's get the uh hubs and diffs unlocked. There we go. So uh what the hell was I talking about? I don't even remember. Something, 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 something. Farm at the top of the hill. That's it. There are fields at the top of the hill we could buy that would still keep everything sort of uh, consolidated, I guess. We wouldn't be driving from one side of the map to the other to get to our fields. They're all you know, fairly close together. Jeez. Uh, which is what we want. So this is field 11 on our left here. You know, we may buy it. We may. We may not. I don't know. I don't know. I take this game too seriously sometimes. You know, it's just a game. And it's interesting that no matter how seriously I take it, that's no guarantee that I'll make money. And no matter how casually I play a map, that's no guarantee that I won't make money. You know what I mean? It's, uh, I wouldn't say it's luck, but I feel like there are so many variables... And the game is changing so... Uh, well, it's slowed down a little bit because 19 is out now. But I feel like for a while... Uh-huh. Oh, uh-huh. Uh Jesus. Yeah. I mean, I... I won't turn it off permanently. But sometimes I, I want to. <laughs> the traffic, I mean. Uh, in its heyday. And it's by no means, you know has been or anything but in its heyday I feel like the game was was changing from month to month and quarter to quarter in a way that you know, depending on how long you play a map six weeks 12 weeks whatever that the between when you started a map and when you sort of got into like the you know the like the thick part of the season or the, the thick part of the the career of a map that between those two, something could happen in Mod World that would, like, radically change the way you farm. So, hop back third person again. So I guess what I'm saying is the the game always seems to be in a state of flux. Or it was. It was. Again, it's, you know, we've slowed down a little bit because we've moved on to FS19 and I think... We've all the significant mods for FS17 that are going to be released already have been released. I think we can agree on that. But it is a uh, a game where you know you can be doing one thing on a map and a, a big mod comes out and it's like, oh well, shit! Now I want to do that, and it it sort of changes the direction you're you're going in. Right? We're gonna buy some sheep from the. Yeah, like, wow, okay, 14. I thought we got 9 in here, but to be fair, this is a, a mod trailer slightly different than the base game trailer. Right. Do beacon lights matter? Some people say they do, some people say they don't. I've heard people say that the traffic responds to beacon lights. I've never seen it. I don't think that's a... I don't think that's accurate. You saying I'm lying? Ah, no, I'm just saying. Right. Carefully. Carefully. Okay, we're good down there. We're not good down there. Still good down there. Going for it. Okay. You know, something that is interesting about... Uh, about gaming is the difference between a skill game and a memorization game and that's a, a term that you hear periodically you know something like Arma 3 thinking about Arma 3 I don't think you could be good at a game like that straight out of the box any more than you could be a good infantry soldier on your first day of boot camp there are just too many things that you don't know you don't know. But you'll learn them, and you'll be you'll you'll do just fine. And I see YouTubers 
Now, I take this with a grain of salt because YouTube is an entertainment platform, so you know, entertainment is not always 100% accurate or truthful. But I see YouTubers that that are playing a shooter game, or really any kind of game. They say they're playing it for the first time, and they are just absolutely schooling. And I know that can happen. I know that is a thing. I know that some YouTubers have, you know, they've been practicing that game for hours before they record that video. That's a thing too. But I know that gaming has kind of a rhythm and a flow to it, and there are some games that you know, like a Battlefield game. If you've played one Battlefield game, you can really sort of understand how to play and be good at any Battlefield game. Which is not to say it's easy, it's just you know how it works. You know the mechanics of it. But then there are other games where <laughs> it's, it's just uh, it's just surreal. I don't get it. I don't, you know. What a buzzkill, man. What an absolute buzzkill. Well, we're going to uh we're going to fight our way out of here. I I guess maybe I I don't know. I mean, We've got... Yeah. We're just going to fight our way out of here. Why not, right? And this is... You know, the video was going great. And we're, 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 we're just over 40 minutes. The video was going great. It really was. And... <laughs> you know, I mean, should I just end it here? Because then that's sort of like wasted you know I just don't get it you know what let's do this let's do this because I've I really um, let's see if we can even get the tractor out yeah I just don't get it it's such a such a beautiful, well thought out map, and that traffic is just absolutely stupid, and uh, it 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 really baffles me. It's like genuinely stupid, and uh, I have no idea why. Because other than that, it's such a it's such a an almost perfect map, and it's really one of the first maps that I kind of kind of fell in love with. Now, I don't know if we're stuck in this hedge or not. I know there are some there's some odd features of the hedges on bullet bill maps where they will uh, stop certain things but not certain other things. And that is to prevent bales from running away. So I believe we can drive a tractor through this hedge. Yeah, we're going to do this. No matter how long it takes, we're going to do this because I'm so fucking pissed off at this at this traffic. Just why, man? Why? And going back to what I was saying, when that happened, uh, you know, there are skill games that maybe you have to learn, but then there are memory games where you just need to memorize a pattern. And that to me is not... It's like the opposite of a skill game because you just memorize a pattern. You know, you're not... I'll try this. It's not a skill. It's not a challenge. It's just knowing how to game the game. And that's also the sort of thing that there's you have no possibility of being good at that the first time you do it because it's designed to surprise you. So I think if we if we grab the tongue from the side here, maybe we can jerk this thing a little bit. 
but I can't yeah, I can't see where the tongue is. There we go. Do you see what I'm saying? That it's there there are some games where you just need to gradually like fail your way through it until you've memorized all the places where you need to do certain things. And then at that point you can advance through the level. But it's not skill. It's it's just memory. Which is a skill, to be fair. But you, you see what I'm saying. Ah. Just trying to trying to do two things at once there. Right, so we'll get the sheet dropped off. I'm going to leave the traffic turned off. I mean, I don't get it. I really don't. I really don't. I, I can say that over and over. I understand that I'm, like, repeating myself, but come on, man. That's... It just makes no sense to me. Right. Uh, where is... I want to say it's over here... Yeah, is that it right there? I want to say that's it right there. Mm, wiggle, wiggle. Right. Don't need these. Turn the beacons off. Is it right here? Ah, huh? right here? Sure is. So let's get these dropped off. Then we need to find a home for this trailer. I think I... I think I know one. Mm. Break is off, throw her in reverse. So I guess I can tie all that together by saying uh, the reason I get so impatient with the traffic is because there's no there's no skill you can use to deal with it. Other than just wait until there's a massive gap. But depending on the way that it spawns and where it spawns, even that won't matter. So, at that point, there's no skill involved. It's just being patient as the game abuses you. Does that make, make sense to say? And that's no fun. There we go. Unload all 14 sheep. Confirm. Yes. Thank you very much. And I think... Hmm. I'm trying to think of a place where we can put this. As much space as we have for storage on this map. You know, we do, but we don't. So, I pulled the Optim out here. Where? Right here. I pulled the Optim out here and put it in there. We just stuffed our water bowser in there. I did that so that we would have space over in here for our bales. But looking into this shed right here, uh, are we ever going to fill that with bales? So maybe we don't want to put bales in there. Maybe we want to put bales over here. The problem that I have putting bales over here, which I've done in the past, the problem with putting bales over here is right over here is where we dump our poo. So I don't know how I feel about having food that close to the poop. So, I don't know. For the meantime, for the meantime, I think I'm going to put this trailer right in here. And then we'll call it. It's going to be a long episode, almost an hour. So much for 30 minutes, huh? But, uh, what are you going to do? All right. Break is off. Let's get this thing parked. So, yeah, man. Uh, Arma 3. Check it out if you've never seen it. Check it out. Plenty of YouTube videos. And it, it, it's crazy, man. It is an absolute scene watching people play that uh, on a big co-op mission. But it's... Uh, as much as I thought that is exactly the sort of thing that I wanted, seeing it being played, I realized, like, mm, maybe I don't want that. But I will give it a try. I went ahead and got it, and I will give it a try. But I'm curious how I end up feeling about it after I've put... Um, I'm going to straighten that out. I can straighten it out and I can slide it back another probably six or eight feet. Let's do that. Right about there. Right about 
there. Well, I mean, it's all undercover, except for the tongue. But, not the end of the world. Right. Get this packed up. Park this up as well. And then next week, we will, because uh, the T-Dub should be almost done with. Yeah, the T-Dub should be almost done with that field by next week. So what we'll do is uh, finish up slurry and get started drilling our winter canola. There's your thumbnail, folks. Thanks for stopping back to check out the Portable Gamer. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Farming Simulator 17 from Coldborough Park Farm. And we'll see you next time. Take care. Now.